Over the past few months, I've played an excessive amount of Five Nights at Freddy's fan games, like a lot, like a lot, a lot. And the main thing I've learned that there's always one strategy. There's always a strategy that you can use, a bypass of sorts, some mechanic that you can stop using in order to get past the entire game with complete ease no matter what happens and a lot of these games have the same issue with them you don't have to use a lot of the mechanics they offer and then you can just beat the entire game and uh yeah we're gonna go over what you can do in each and every one of the five nights at candies games to beat it in one straight shot one sitting and that's it now let's get right into it the only strategy you really need to use for night one and two is look left and right. You don't even need to look at your cameras, you just need to look for the glowing eyes because the only animatronics that are active is Cindy, Candy, uh, Chimpanzee, and Penguin. Now those motherfuckers only have glowing eyes and they only come to the doors left and right. So all you need to do, look right, look left, it, close the doors if you see glowing eyes, then hear for the footsteps and the sound cue to see if they walk away and that's all you have to do and then it'll be smooth sailing from there you'll beat the first two nights now that's basically what you have to do for the entire game that is if not for blank now for night three all the way to night six you have blank to worry about and he's pretty simple as well once you get the hang of it just keep your camera on on what camera is blank on actually <laughs> camera 11 i think all you gotta do is keep your camera on camera 11 and you don't even have to look at him all the time. Every few seconds just flip up the camera and if he's still on camera 11, you're fine. However, if he's no longer on camera 11, immediately shut the window, the, the window shutters right in front of you and then you'll be perfect. Now if you combine that with the strategy I mentioned for night 1 and 2, you will have no issue beating night 3. However, night 4 is where it gets a little tricky because the game likes to introduce old candy. Quite big. So uh, oh, be careful about him. oh, that wasn't oh, fucking uh, there before. before. Great. It makes you think you have to switch up your strategy, but you really don't. Old Candy does not have the glowing eyes when, when he comes to the left door. However, he still has the sound cue. So, yes, you can look at the cameras to see if he's at your door. However, you do not need to if you learn how to recognize the sound cue, which I'm going to play for you now. And that's basically it. That's the strategy for night four, five, and six, because yes, night six introduces the rat as well, but the rat is the exact same as old candy, just like two or three times faster. You just have to worry about him a little bit more. Now, is it an issue? Yes. Will it take some time getting used to? Yes. However, it's better knowing this info than just winging it because it'll take a lot more time. Old candy and the rat seem menacing, but they're really just copy and paste candy and cindy without the glowing eyes easily bypassed by getting used to hearing the sound cues now combining that while dealing with blank who becomes a lot more aggressive as the nights progress so night five he'll be fucking really trying to get into your office but other than that night six is a breeze night five and six piece of cake once you know all of the things i just told you seems pretty simple right now Let's get on to something even fucking simpler. Five Nights at Candy's 2. This is without a doubt the easiest game I've ever played in my life. And even the developer, Emil Mako, says that they felt they rushed the game a little bit just to get it out. And it could have made it a little bit harder. The strategy you need to use to beat the game in one shot is explained to you on night two and that strategy you can use to beat every single night because almost every single animatronic does the exact same thing. Now is that unfortunate? Yes, however it's, it's a really great game and I really do appreciate the developer for making it because yes it was easy however I had a lot of fun playing it. It may even be my favorite Five Nights at, Five Nights at Candy's game. The strategy. So, what you gotta do, night one, the only animatronic is Cindy. Now, you see her in the hallway, just click any phone in the room around you, she'll go to it. Boom, done, strategy, that's it. Night two, the chimpanzee is, is introduced. Now, what you gotta do for him, any room that you hear him knocking on, now, there is a bit of a surround sound, so... The room that the chimpanzee is knocking on, you will hear in your headphones, if you're wearing headphones, you will hear the surround sound. So you'll be able to guess pretty quickly what room he's in. So you just find that, click 
on the telephone and he'll come running out of the room and that'll be smooth sailing from there. However, Cindy probably will end up going to that room. That is a good thing to make note of. And that's not a bad thing. That is a good way to lure her and lure her in and get the chimpanzee out at the same exact time. Now, that's the strategy you need to use for night two. However, it, it can be a little more in depth than that. Like, you just need to use the same strategy used for night one for Cindy. And then the new chimpanzee, like I said, just lure him out with the phone. And it's really easy to do. There's a big window when he starts knocking on the vents to crawl in them. So it's really not that big of an issue. He doesn't come down the main hallway, so you'll have no issue getting rid of the chimpanzee. Now, night three, they introduce Candy and they introduce the penguin. Candy is the exact same as Cindy, so use the same strategy for Cindy. The penguin, however, I just had a fucking voice crack of the century. Okay, the penguin, however, what you gotta do is just not look at him. He pops up on any camera possible, and all you gotta do is flip down the camera, and then you're good. That's all you gotta do. As for Candy, like I said, just use the same strategy used for Cindy. If he pops up in the hallway, click any phone in the area, and then boom, done, you're good. And uh, keep track of this ch chimpanzee with the same strategy at the same time. No problem, done, bang, bang, boom, you're good. Night 4 is just a ramped up version of Night 3. There's no new animatronics introduced yet. However, it does get slightly harder, but honestly not that much harder for it to matter. You still just gotta make sure Candy and Sydney is not in the hallway, and if they're not, you're golden. And then you also have to make sure the chimpanzee not getting in the vents, you're good as well. Now. However, night five, what you gotta do, blank is now added to night five. And you know what you gotta do? The exact same thing you do for Candy and Sydney. Just when you see him in the hallway, click on any one of the phones. He'll go the fuck right out of there. And it's perfect. He does move, I have noticed, he's a bit more uh, aggressive than Candy and Sydney. He's like, he moves around the rooms a lot faster and he kind of gets in your face a lot quicker when he's in the hallway. So be sure as soon as you see him, click on any one of the phone calls. I like clicking at the top right room phone and the far right room phone. I'll probably pull those up on screen to show you. I didn't mention this before, but I probably should have. Although, it's not actually that important. Because the game likes to make you think it's that important, but it's really not. If you, whatever phone you call, the animatronic that goes in there will try and break the phone. And uh, you really just have to turn the phone off once they get into the room you called. And it's very simple. So, night four, it ramps up in difficulty. However, you just use the same exact strategy. Cindy, Candy, and Blank, they do the exact same thing as per usual. Get in the hallway, get them the fuck out by calling a phone. Chimpanzee, he gets in the room, call the room that he's in, gets him the fuck out. Don't look at the penguin, and uh, there you go. You're great. However... Night five. Night five is where I got jump scared for the first time during my playthrough by blank. I did fuck up a little bit because I looked at the penguin and the penguin fucked me up and blank shot his load in my ass. That was probably not the right term to use, but you know what? We run with it. We, we, we go with it. Okay, so. And for night five, it's basically the same exact strategy as I've been telling you. Just do the exact same thing, just a little bit faster. And it's not even like, the difficulty ramps up as the nights go on, yet not that much at all. Not even a single bit as much as you would think. It's very easy. Now, night six. Night six is where it gets a little complicated. All the animatronics go the fuck away. Except the rat and the cat now get introduced as the only two main antagonists in this night. There are no other animatronics. Now, that would change the game. That would change the strategy, you would think. However, it doesn't. They all just have the exact same, like, strategy as the rest of the characters. They have the same abilities as the rest of them. Strategy for the rat and the cat. The cat will act as the chimpanzee. It will try and get in the vents. Like I said with the chimpanzee, click on the room it's in, it'll get the fuck right out of there. The rat, same as candy. It'll be in the hallway. It Now, however, these two are much faster. Well, actually, not much faster. They're a little bit faster than the rest of the animatronics. So your reflexes do have to be a tiny bit better. However, not that much. I'm pretty sure it'll be a piece of cake. Now, how I did die once or twice on the fifth night. So, look. This isn't like a guide to never die. This is a guide to just beat it in one shot. I did die while playing Five Nights at Candy's 2. Once, though. It, it, like I said, very easy game. 
But if you die, it's no problem. You just need to learn the strategy. It's, it happens to the best of us, you know? Now, on to the harder one. Five Nights at Candy's story. I have a special relationship with this game. Not a great one, but I did like it. It's a very good game. However, my least favorite. Because of what I'm going to tell you, Night 6 is especially fucking hard in Five Nights at Candy's 3, but I'm going to get you through it. And I found a loophole that you're going to love. For Five Nights at Candy's 3, there's actually a few mechanics that do matter, unlike Five Nights at Candy's 1 and 2. So, first I'm going to go over the cassette player, then I will get to the animatronics. The cassette player is the main thing you should probably think about when playing Five Nights at Candy's 3, because it speeds up the nights when it's playing music. Now, I did something very fucking stupid when playing. I thought, whenever I turn around, I can only ever hold down the rewind button and I, ca I can't let go of it or else it'll stop rewinding, which is not true. So, what I mean by that is when you activate the cassette player to play music, it will have to be rewinded at some point because it'll run out of tape. Now, when you rewind it, all you have to do is click the rewind button and go back to what you're doing. You can turn back around. Me, however, I did not know that. I stayed on that rewind button until I heard a sound behind me. I shouldn't have done that. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is click the rewind button, turn back around, and when you hear that it's rewound, I can't pronounce things for some reason, but anyways, when you hear that it's re- <laughs> When you hear that it's rewound, all you have to do is click the play button again and just repeat that system over and over and over again. Now, the animatronics. The rat is the only animatronic you have to deal with during night one and two. Then the cat comes in. We'll get to that later. The rat, what you gotta do, the rat will appear in the closet in front of you and the closet to your right and the door to your left. Now, what I suggest you doing for every single one of these nights, go back and forth with your mouse, back and forth constantly, looking to see who's there and hearing for the sound cue. When you see one of them pop up, in either one of these doors, flash your flashlight with them. And what I mean by flash your flashlight at them, I don't mean actually flash them, just hover your flashlight over them and they'll go away. Now, by the off chance that that doesn't work and that you don't get to them in time to flash them, they will appear in front of you. They won't appear in front of you necessarily, but they will. You just have to turn to them where they are. So you'll, you'll see a cue for it, really. Keep your mouse on them for a few seconds and when he finally finally stops moving he will go under your bed and for the first night it will mention something has crawled under your bed but for the rest of the nights it will not give you that tip but just know he did go under your bed if he didn't jump scare you so look under your bed if he's on either right or left side get up from under your bed and look to the opposite side and then when you hear the sound cue it's very slight it's very slight and it's a little bit annoying to hear but i will play the sound cue now when you hear that sound cue, turn to his direction, look at him, he will be popping his head out from under the bed, and then all you have to do is keep your mouse on him until he goes away, and it, it, they'll play an animation of him walking out the door. The cat comes in during night three. He does get a little bit annoying to deal with, however, he should never be your main priority. The rat should still be your main priority, because as you deal with the rat, you can kind of deal with the cat at the same time. The cat will only ever appear on the right side of your bed or the left side, just popping up slowly and slowly, one pixel at a time. Now, don't don't let him reach you, but if he does, you will get jump scared and have to start the, start the night over again. When you see the cat pop up on either side of the bed, the right or left, just flash him with your flashlight. What I mean, like I said, hover over him and then he will just go away. He will continuously pop up during the night though, so that's something to watch for. Play the tape, and when the tape runs out, if you don't hear any sound cues and you're not dealing with a rat at the moment and there's a moment of silence, go rewind the tape. And then, turn back around, deal with the animatronics. When you don't have to deal with them anymore and you have a moment of silence, turn back, play the recording, and then it's smooth sailing from there. Use that for every single night. The routine will get easier and easier, but the nights will also get harder and harder. Now, unlike Five Nights at Candy's 2, it isn't a very small gradual buildup. It gets pretty hard. 
right out of the gate. It, it is, I will say this is the hardest Five Nights at Candy's game without a doubt. It took me a long while. Now, use that routine from night one to night five. I highly suggest you do that. Now, if that all makes sense to you, we can go on to night six. Ah, night six of Five Nights at Candy's 3 was a bitch. And I have to admit, I found a loophole. Like I said, I found a loophole. I actually just did this about an hour ago. I beat, I've been trying to beat this game for about two days now. And uh, yeah, it's a bitch. It's, it's a bitch. I will say night six is a bitch. I was able to beat one night one to five in one sitting. But because I didn't know the strategy, I was unable to beat night six in that in one sitting. However, you can by listening to what I'm about to tell you. All you got to do, move your mouse back and forth. Look to where the puppets do. You see them? Oh, shit. Flash your light at them. Flash them. Keep your mouse hovered over them. So, if you fail to do that, he will then pop up in front of you again. You have to look for him. There you go. You found him. Now he's going to be a little bitch. You have to keep your mouse on him the same as you did with the rat. However, he likes to do it for about two minutes fucking longer than the rat, and he likes to do it a lot faster. So your reflexes actually have to be good. Like, they actually have to be good. If your reflexes suck, it's going to take you a little bit longer. This is the one mechanic in a Five Nights at Candy's game where reflexes and skill actually fucking matters. Which I failed constantly to do. I can't even lie. It took me forever and I didn't even do it. You want to know what I did? There's a loophole. There's a loophole to make sure you don't have to deal with the puppet. Sometimes no matter how hard I would track him and have really good tracking and reflexes towards him, he would still jump scare me for no fucking reason. I feel like that's a glitch. I may be doing something wrong, but I did, I did extensive research to make sure that's what you had to fucking do. And that's what everybody else did. But for some reason, no matter how good my reflexes were, he just liked to jump scare me for no reason sometimes, which was so, so annoying. And it stopped me constantly but yeah the puppet is annoying and i'm about to show you this loophole so all you gotta do is stay still stay fucking still wherever the, okay you don't even have to track him back and forth let him come out from the closet let him come out from the door and appear on whatever side he's on you know what you gotta do just don't look at him don't don't put peer your head over to look at him at all just stay on the side you are and wait it out and he won't jump scare you. He won't do anything. That's exactly what I did. And I beat the night. However, you did have to wait out the 15 minutes. But it's much easier. And it's honestly the point of the video. How to beat Five Nights at Candies in the easiest way possible. And that's it. It's a loophole. I wouldn't call it a glitch. It's just something the developer didn't put in the game. Emil Mako did not put a countermeasure to someone standing still and not looking at the puppet so all you can do is look in the opposite direction and he won't jump scare you even though he's behind you he just don't doesn't do anything you can wait out the rest of the night good luck and then have fun but however if you don't want to use that loophole strategy you can use the strategy i mentioned before keep your mouse on him at all times and he does move around the room unlike the rat when he's in that stage so all you have to do keep your mouse on him see if your reflexes are better than mine because they probably are even though my reflexes aren't even that bad and i was tracking him perfectly fine he would still just jump scare me for no reason which you've seen the clips by now of me showing you that uh, you know that's some bullshit too right you know straight up that is some absolute bullshit I'm very interested to see your take on my video and if I missed anything at all don't be afraid to call me out on my bullshit okay so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video drop a like and that was how to beat every single five minutes of candy's game in one straight shot in one sitting if you wanted to those are the best strategies to use and uh, yeah consider subscribing we have a brand new discord server link is in the description and uh, yeah see ya